החברתי הראשון. הכוח חוסר לאנשים. ערב טוב לכולם, ערב טוב צופים ומאזינים יקרים. אתם על עוד תוכנית של זהות, תוכנית 133. ממש מספר מכובד, מה שנקרא. אני מורחת סופר מיוחדת היום, את האמת, חיכיתי הרבה זמן אה, 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 לשמוע את, אה, את מה שיש לך, אה, אה, את המשנה שלך, מה שנקרא, אני, אנחנו מכירים הרבה זמן יחסית. אה, אה, לירון גליקמן, חברים, למי שלא מכיר, זה ממש ממש הזמן. אה, ואת כמובן תרחיבי על עצמך אה, אה, יותר אה, אה, אחרי איזה שיר קצר. למי שעדיין אה, לא זכה להכיר את אה, לירון, יש לכם עכשיו שעה שלמה. ללמוד על נטוורקינג uh, ומיתוג אישי. אנחנו ננהל את התוכנית uh, באנגלית כדי לפנות ליותר קהלים, אז לא להילחץ. אנחנו כמובן ננסה להנגיש את זה בצורה שהיא לא אנגלית uh, עכשיו uh, רמת אוקספורד. אנחנו באמת רוצים לגשת לכמה שיותר קהלים. Uh, לירון ואני גם חולקים uh, uh, קהלי uh, משותפים, לקוחות משותפים, וזה נראה לי מאוד uh, uh, נכון. שיר קצר, ניתן למוקי את הבמה שלו. אנחנו איתכם בעוד שתי דקות, אל תלכו לשום מקום, אנחנו נחזור כבר עם אה, אה, שיח אה, באנגלית ותוכלי להציג את עצמך טיפה יותר אה, בהרחבה. אז אנחנו ממש כמה דקות איתכם, תרגישו חופשי להרים לי, בעיקר ללירון, מגיע לה שרים, תכניסו אנשים לתוך השידור, אנחנו ממש אה, כמה דקות איתכם. תשתדלו לא לברוח יותר מדי. לב חופשי, היום הלב שלי חופשי, אין כבלים ואין עוד דאגות, והוא נקי משקרים, כן, וחף מגעגוע עירום. לב חופשי, כמו הרוח, ואחרי שנשרף, ואחרי שנגמר כבר. משתחרר ונמלט לעוד פעם אחת. ואור גדול עולה מצורך החושך, מתגלה, מתגלה. הלילה ימלט מפני הבוקר. שלי חופשי, בלי תוכניות ובלי הבטחות. והחיים ממשיכים, משפחה, חברים, נשים, אז אני לא לבד. אני רק בלעדייך, והלב הזה שנשרף, הלב הזה שנגמר כבר, משתחרר. לעוד פעם אחת. ואור גדול עולה מתוך החושך, מתגלה, מתגלה. הלילה ימלט מפני הבוקר העולה, העולה. ועכשיו את רחוקה מ... אבל זה לא כואב, כי כמו שהגעת, ככה גם הלכת, את ששברת לי את הלב, חופשי. תודה רבה למוקי, אנחנו מודים לך מקרב לב. אנחנו עושים עכשיו סוויץ' לאנגלית, אנחנו הולכים באמת לרא... לראיין, להקדיש את הרעיון הזה. קצת יותר לקהל הגלובלי, אני חושב שכל אחד יכול להסיק מללמוד על לפתח בעצם ברנד אישי ובכלל נטוורקינג ו- ו- ולדעתי ממך באופן כללי, אז עכשיו שהרמתי לך עד אין סוף. Let's switch to English now, it's about time uh, and turn off the phones. So, uh, לירון גליקמן, good evening. It's, it's good evening. Finally, you know, we've been, we've been meeting like in the same circles for over like five years and I always wanted to more. hear more, even more than five years. I think years. even eight years. Eight years. So. Wow, that's crazy. Eight or nine years. So you yeah. actually saw me grow up and I was a, a little up. kid. 
So, uh, so Liron, for those who are not familiar with you and your work and how you contribute to the e- ecosystem itself, um, tell us more about yourself and uh, why you do what you do. Sure. So again, thank you so much for having me. And um, you want me to tell about myself. So I actually started in this setting. So it's very um, exciting for me because I started <laughs> my career as a radio station, <laughs> as a radio, <laughs> sorry, at a radio, as a radio station. station. Uh, at the age of 16, uh, I was working in Tishim FM, 90 FM. I actually convinced the CEO uh, to let me um, speak and broadcast from the um, uh, municipality elections before I, had the, before I was in the age of voting. So oh, this, really? I was underage. Um, and and this is, I, I was broadcasting in Israeli radio and in Australian radio for about um, eight years. So thanks for having me in my... Sure, sure. You know how much fun it is, so <laughs> you know. can rely, relate. Um, so tell us more about your uh, professional side. Yeah, so after the radio, it's been a while, a lot of, a lot of things. And what I do uh, in the past uh, decade and even more so in the last five years as, an, as a self-employed, mm-hmm. um, I actually network. I, uh, I am an international speaker and I specialize in business relationships and personal branding, which is networking and how to bring yourself um, mm. uh, in the most authentic and strategic way to achieve your goals and actually to fulfill yourself in life. This is one thing I do as a speaker. Um, and the other thing is that I do, uh, I take the same skills, but more into the hard skills. hard side of them and I support startups uh, early stage startups in their global expansion which also is also about building relationships strategic relationships sales how to market yourself so it's the same skills but different and yeah yeah because yeah. startups yeah. at the beginning are really bad I'm sorry that I'm <laughs> saying it like in that way but they can really uh, say we can say bad things in this radio so <laughs> we can totally say bad things but I'm because they don't really know how If the product is what I need as a client they, they they're not sure enough uh, who's their potential client and all of these things when you meet a potential investor and you, yeah. you don't spit it out correctly it just fades you know so it's 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 interesting to hear that you do both smaller uh, startups and and that big brands and companies that want to you know but you know eventually a startup whether it's his first time or, or sixth time mm-hmm People do business with people. So if you're a startup founder, and you, and if, if it's not your first startup, then you may have some advantage, but you still uh, sit in front of an investor and need, there are different levels. You need to connect with him on a personal you level. You say advantage as if uh, like charisma, you're a person that people want to be around? It depends. It depends if this is a part of you, if you let it out. I, I understand. So, yeah. so at the beginning you said people are the key like to move forward, to meet your goals, your business goals. Yeah. And also personal goals. Why is that? Why do you think people is the, the main motivation for us as entrepreneurs, as business owners, to yeah. keep growing, not just financially, but like networking-wise? So I think, first of all, um, from the dawn of humanity, <laughs> if you want to go this far, uh, you know, people uh, or the human race um, succeeded because it was able to collaborate people were collaborated and build you know um, like if it's uh, hunters and gatherers and create communities and so on fast forward to today um, you know when I talk about I think and also for me I think creating relationship we all need that to achieve almost anything in life even you and I didn't come only because one person because two people decided to bring us to life so exactly this is how important relationships are um, having said that um, we all want to achieve different things and it fulfills us on different levels right uh, you want to do what you do because it fulfills you on a personal level uh, you want to be a radio broadcaster and then you want to design things it gives you um, money it gives you financial security it gives you um, different things yeah and all or most of those things maybe the the uh, um, is about people. The only thing or the small things that are not about other people is about your internal motivation. You need to have the drive to do this. And when you have the drive to do this, you understand that in order to achieve it, you have to create a relationship with other people. Is it safe to say that all the people I meet on my path are going to help me with something? Because... All the good people that you meet no, will cause, help you. <laughs> cause, yeah, but you've been to a lot yeah. of networking events and meetups yeah. and so on. And, and you always get that feeling that you, you're talking to a person that might not be in, your, in his mm-hmm. best interest to help you, you know? Yeah. A, a taker, if you might. So let me give you a tip. Mm-hmm. You say, basically, your question, sorry, is how to get other people to want to help you. Yeah, because, yeah. okay, I'm interesting. 
I'm, I'm a good person. I walk into a room. Yeah. No one really cares, you know, that you have an amazing product or startup. If, we, if we're talking yeah. about people, so how can I magnet them to me? So the key thing that you just said is no one really cares. And I agree with that to yeah. a certain extent. Because I thought know, it was too harsh, but... No, no, that's, but that's, that's, the, that's reality, yeah. I mean, we all care about, or most people, we care about others, but we may be caring more about ourselves, especially if you're a stranger. So if you're talking about um, a networking event, even if you go to the supermarket or any other place, um, the, first of all, I believe that most people, and also through my, my experience, most people are happy to help others. And if you only ask for advice, uh, you may be surprised how many people are happy to give you advice because it's also because of you, but it's also mostly because of them. When you ask for someone for advice. I want to hear your opinion. Yeah. and you, you mean something to me. Yeah. I came to ask for your advice. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I have I could give her something and I could feel so good about giving her something. And when you you convince yourself that uh, that you want to help me because it will actually make you feel good, then you get to like me more. Mm. And and what happens there and what can happen in different events is the process of no like trust. When people get to know you, even, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Anis. Okay. Hi. <laughs> know you, like you, trust you, even on, on a very thin level, they want to hear what you have to say. And when you ask people about themselves, when you talk to them about their common grounds about let's say passions mm. something light so if i try to, to to make it like a straight answer then in order to get people to want to communicate with you first of all create this no like trust make sure you come you smile you give them this comfortable feeling next to you find interest in them ask them about them and make them feel fun around you give them good vibes and when they feel fun and secure they may want to at least communicate with you and it they will feel on the cases it's not 100 percent of course but but, yeah. but when you come i agree when you you talk to someone and you give them the feeling that oh you're super interesting and and that's kind of what we're yeah. doing here basically i mean i called you because i know you have the information and knowledge to yeah. talk about networking and personal branding and so on so that immediately connected between us so it's it's kind of the same thing yeah and in networking events it's not so weird you know to come to a person and say hey what are your uh you know it's uh, a bit, but it can be weird. It can be uncomfortable. It so can, many people come to networking events and they just don't feel comfortable to network. And that's the thing, you know, that's the paradox because you come there to meet people, but you yeah. don't do And anything. you get stuck on your phone or drinking coffee. Yeah. And, and if you get the, um, again, the, the courage to, to approach someone and again, even say the little, little thing of yeah. how are you? Or excuse me, where is the restroom? People By the way, I'm, introduce yourself, I'm Liron. So just those little things that engages the conversation and break the ice. Yeah. I agree, people are, re are really struggling with just a handshake, like yeah. a simple, hi, my yeah. name is. And, and, and it's not that weird because you're actually there to do that. You know what I mean? It's like going to a bar and ordering water. It's and you know, that brings me to another thing. You asked me, why do I do what I do? Mm -hmm. First of all, I love it. And I've, I, had, I had a big story <laughs> of, of how I you know, arrived to Australia knowing nobody. And I reached to uh, working in corporate Australia. And a lot of networking stories about myself. But I think the main thing I discovered is that nobody teaches us how to create relationships, let alone business relationships that can make our life rich and achieve our goals and, and more. So nobody teaches us how to build a brand, how to communicate in our own way. Mm. So what I do, what I've been doing in the last like 15 years is researching this. And I created different methodologies that I actually teach. But every time I teach it, I tell people, and I'm gonna tell you, you need to see how this can work for you, for your character, for your environment, for, for who you are, for what you feel Not all with. methods will fit each person. There's no one size fits all, but there are principles yeah. that when you make sure you fit them to yourself, you can make it work. And that's what I teach organizations. That's where I teach startup founders and CEOs. And not only in Israel, also around the world because human beings we want similar things right yeah totally but i think yeah. around the world it might verify it may it might be a bit asia, different I it's mean, not the u.s but still exactly i mean you can't approach someone in asia like you approach someone in, in the u.s i mean then the business environment and so on will you know and you want to hear something funny I, I a few years ago i spoke at in japan and as I went off That's the stage, <laughs> I talked about um, innovation. Um, and when I went off stage, there was a Japanese guy. You know, people were lining up to speak to me. And then this Japanese guy approached me and he said, could you please come to the corner? 
and I was like, it wasn't really appropriate, but I was like, okay. And then he had a folder and he started opening a folder and actually pitching me. And I told him really, really, really respectfully, like, thank you so much. I really appreciate you took the time to do this. But I, I think it's like, it's not the right time and I kind of feel uncomfortable, so maybe we can take it otherwise. And he didn't do the no like trust. It's like when you meet someone and you just want to get married, instead of let's date. Yeah, uh, give me your money or give me your tips yeah. or uh, I have a great idea, but it's not the point. The idea is not the point. You're the point because people invest in people like you just said. So let's talk more about personal branding. What does it mean, especially in these days where we're so used to get like content and brands and blah, blah. We, you get like 10,000 messages yeah. in a day. It's super crazy. I mean, with TikTok and so on. What is personal branding and what can it do to benefit my um, uh, business as a business owner, as yeah. an entrepreneur? So first of all, personal branding, same as networking, but personal branding is, is a supportive mechanism. Let's, talk, let's say, we, we say, we call it a tomech lechima. Like it's something that supports your, the achievement of your goal. Mm -hmm. But basically, we all have a brand, whether we want it or not. And the brand is how people perceive you, is what the values that I see when I, when I see you or, or feel from you. Um, and it's basically what you constantly um, communicating on every level. So not just on social. I not mean, on social. That's not a, even. that's a big yeah. a big misunderstanding. So you know, you and I we're texting, we're uh, sending a messenger, we're talking on the phone. What are some consistency? I mean, when I when I every time I remember I was communicating with you, then I see you're you're very you have good eyes and you are very energetic and you're very positive. And as much I don't know you that well. But I have a good understanding of what you are, and also our brain completes the story. Like this is yeah. some of our, our, our cognitive biases. So, yeah. and, and when you see me, I know I'm very positive, I'm a smiley person. So there is kind of an image, which is nice to be smiley and positive, but in business, you want to show more, more things. Yeah, and you don't want to smile because someone told you to smile, because otherwise it, it wouldn't be authentic. You said it authenticity. It only works when it's real, Anis. Exactly. I mean, you, you can't just it. walk and smile and go like, hi, you're very interesting, tell me more. You're not a robot. It's super weird. Yeah. So personal brand is how people perceive me as a person slash business owner. Yeah. How can it benefit me? I mean, I have a brand. I have my business, I have my business logo. Why do I need to brand myself as a person? Let me take an example. Messi, why would Messi, what, what benefits Messi gets by, be, by being a brand, the brand that he is? Except the, the merchandise <laughs> and, and... For example? Uh, a lot of dollars, I guess. Uh, income, uh, uh, his worth will get bigger along the years because he gets more value inside this thing called yeah. uh, Lionel Messi. Uh, that's what I think anyway. So it's I not just about money, obviously, but... But you said, you said a few main things. First of all, the fact... Messi, first of all, is, is a legend uh, in what he does. He's a professional. So we're, we, if we're taking into account that brand supports the professional, then we know he's a professional, first of all. On top of that, you just said the word. You said value. And it could be the real value, but also your perceived value. Mm. So brand is actually a perceived value. And since I perceive you... Um, as a good person, I, I may perceive that it's good to work with you and that you're very good at what you do. Um, and the fact that when, when someone says, do you know any designer? I'm like, yes, of course, Anis. Um, then then when the, the, there is a conversation around you, around your brand, and as yeah. much as you're out there, it could be online, but it could also be the experience. We may meet only once, but you, you created such a good impression and that's what you, you left for me. And, and both of them can, can work together. I mean, the brand's name, my together. business, and me as a person, as a owner of this brand business. But the business is you. It can be called the Radio Chavreti Arishon, but it's still you're the business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So what do you think are the three basic uh, 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 things to achieve mm -hmm. in, in, in creating or becoming this... Uh, branded person i mean this person who people talk about people think yeah. he's a good person and so on what are in your opinion like the three basics towards getting to there do that doing that so first of all it's really about n being you like don't try to be someone else but you as a father or you as a businessman 
you, you have the same the same traits, but maybe you use them differently. Yeah. So <clears throat> the first thing I always do when I work with is, again, if it's uh, entrepreneurs that are about to go to pitch to investors and they're not sure how to bring themselves out there or um, managers in organizations or so on, the first thing is really kind of look inside and be aware of, I call it the, um, the how you want to be perceived versus how you are being perceived. So first of all, just look inside. What are your, uh, what is the messages? When people say Anis, what do you want them to know about you? Uh, what values and strengths are the most um, significant in, in your job? Maybe again, for you, you're just in front of me, so it's a good example. You're creative, you, you give a great service, you're professional. I mean, what would be the main, I would mm -hmm. say three to five strengths values that lead you then, that I want people to proceed me by yeah mm -hmm. and then who is your audience and you can have different audiences and then what are your messages for these audiences mm. and each audience can have a different type of messaging from the same brand from the yes. same personal brand so you have a main story but you have different angles for yeah. example when I work with companies or so on I, I ask them who are your audiences so it can be um, entrepreneurs and organizations and um, media, for example. Mm. And then we break it down is what's in it for them? What is your main value for entrepreneurs? What is your main value for organizations? And what are your, is your main value for media? It could be different. And when you understand the value, then you know how to say, to tell the story a bit differently to each one. Yeah. So the first thing is really building your identity, your brand identity, which again, it's about what's your, where you want to go, what's your goals. Who is your audience? Just What's actually your sitting down, uh, my laptop, whatever, writing down those five it's words. Work. Yeah, and usually it's better to do it with someone because then you you really get, you get feedback. Thing, you get feedback because <laughs> you can say smart, yeah. and and you're not that smart. Or I'm just nobody saying, will tell you you're not that smart, but <laughs> no, but just an yeah. example. But like yeah. uh, um, um, uh, easygoing, and you're not easygoing. You're a super stressed person, and you're all like fidgety. Exactly. Uh, and people won't say the bad things about them. So I think it's a good uh, thing to have like this mirror. Because you said, yeah, it's a mirror, it's a feedback. How can so I tell? Yeah, thing. sorry. Yeah, if you want a few things. No, no, it's, it's fine. You have more? Um, yeah. so, so one thing is really starting with, again, your ident identity. Mm. Once you understand who you are, how you look like, even Google yourself, then it's about how do you communicate it to the world. And then I look at two things. How do you communicate it in the actions that you do mm. and online? Um, and if there is one main tip I could give you is really remember that whatever, if you want to create a new brand or not a new, but design your brand and make sure that the real messages and values and strengths are going out there, just make sure to, to, to repeat, be repetitive, decide on three, four main messages or main things that you want to um, just share them in different ways. And, People to perceive you by and yeah. just go like, let's say, uh, I'm a strong person, so I can say I'm a strong person. I can say I can uh, 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 um, address things easily and, and so on. Like take this strong word and just... Yeah. Well, first of all, it has to be you, you know, it, should, it shouldn't be like this. Of course. But you can talk about, you can share an article of some place that talks about, um, I don't know, about inner strength and mm -hmm. say, you know, I, I, I learned much about fr from this article. Yeah. Um, and that and says you about you that, yeah. That's a good idea. Story, or what is your word for 2023 for me is to develop my strength, or you know, give tips about three things that that I feel that help me become stronger at what I do. For example, mm -hmm. all kind of ways to. And but, yeah. And how can I tell as a person that you know I listened to you, I worked hard, I put those four to five basics and and mm -hmm. and started creating content towards this mission, and how can I? Tell that I'm already there. That I'm that I have a brand. personal brand. You know, is it just people talking or some that's other? A great question. Um, first of all, and I think that that applies for everything we talked here. It's about you have to feel it. You have to own it. There the is vibes. A, you have to own <laughs> your your own brand. And I think which you myself if, and our listeners that are that created their own business, they know that eventually they 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 have to be the the biggest believers in their business and in themselves. And I had so many harsh nights, days, months that I when I wasn't really believing in myself, yeah. I couldn't bring it out there. And it's easier said than done. So I think it starts from the inside out. Um, Cuz confidence brings confidence outside, you know? When yeah. you when you go confident in a room, 
it makes the whole uh, a different approach. People approach you differently than you just you're on your phone and yeah, whatever. Confidence and even uh, feeling comfortable in your own skin. And there is another th- a sentence that I really like from uh, Marianne Williamson. She's an American um, uh, thought leader. She said that um, once you let your own light shine, when you feel comfortable and you let others feel that you're in your zone, you actually give them permission to be the same. So if I am coming to you and I'm authentic and you see that I feel comfortable and That's I interesting. truly yeah. believe about what I do, so you would feel comfortable next to me. And if I'm not like this phony person and you see I don't have too many, you know, masks, masks we all probably don't, not 100% feel com- comfortable, then you may feel that. And if I tell you, you know, Anise, um, I'm really good at that, but I also have flaws and I'm not sh- sharing that everything is perfect, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's basic. about putting the right masks and not, I mean, we all have them. It's it's fine. It's yeah. normal. We're social human we beings. Connect. We're, we we're social connect. animals and we want to yeah. connect. It's fine to use the different faces and the, the, the face that's right for your goals in yeah. this particular moment, the person you're talking with. So, so I agree with that. How do you think we can um, create an advantage in, in our line of work yeah. or each other uh, person to each their own and in, in their own business field? How do you think creating a personal brand will give me an advantage over competitors, yeah. over people that I worked with? So if I'll tell you what is um, the best um, um, gas drink, soda drink, which one would it be? Coke, I guess. Why? Um, it's Why familiar. Coke Sprite. <laughs> uh, I prefer Pepsi lately, but it doesn't. Not Pepsi. But it doesn't matter. Uh, I would probably say Coke. Yeah, it's the yeah. first thing that will pop in my head because. Because you, know. you see them everywhere. Yeah, exactly. They're all over. They give you those slogans of it's the you know the best taste of life, but it's. But not that's really a brand. That's a brand. It's not like a person. I don't know who's the CEO of Coca Cola. Okay. You know. So interesting thing that you raised that. First of all, companies research in the U.S. shows that companies that their, their CEOs are a brand, meaning that people know them, that they're communicative, that they're out there, they bring themselves out there. Um, the companies are more profitable and seem to be more reliable because there is a human being that um, representing the company. So, so your question was, um, what benefits um, advantages. or what advantages? So the advantages can be many. Again, if someone thinks of a designer or or, uh, or a certain company, um, then your company maybe want to pop in their head. If I am looking for a PR company and I'm um, googling, you know. Um, one of the people I was working with in the PR company, or, or n- and any any other any startup company, sorry, and I'm googling and I, <laughs> I either don't find any information on the person, or I do find some complementing information that complete the whole picture. Then they get an advantage. So the advantage for that I is, I mean, people would know you, like you, trust you. You will be able to get more opportunities your way. You will be able to when you have your brand out there, you can express yourself freely and in your own style and the right people will connect to you so the advantages are are that you're known that you can monetize more you you can be open for more opportunities you can be, be chosen for more things and it's really i want to emphasize it's not about um i'm not i don't care about what people say about me because i'm like afraid that they won't say bad thing no it's about how to how to design the way they see you and the way for you to design how they that's a good phrase yeah yeah because you want to control it in the end you don't want it to be like uh something random you know and you can design it sorry yeah just just through the the information that you put out there that is consistent with your brand with your values with your messages with how you bring yourself out there to people yeah um you cannot control everything yeah obviously and some people will talk trash about your back and so on the competitors but it doesn't matter as long as your uh, your spine and your core is very strong and you know what you want people to yeah. understand and see you so it's all good I mean you don't need yeah. the, the, the to, to think about the negative feedback and I'll also add one more thing. Another advantage is uh, even if you're working for an organization or again, you're managing people, then I see the brand that it really serves you uh, in a few main things. Uh, one is when you have a need that you want to fulfill, like you're a manager, you want to ask for things, you want to ask for things that are not uh, so you know, uh, common. 
identity. That's a good point because it's so different. Because I'm yeah. not an entrepreneur. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm trying yeah. to, to, you know, make you people do their jobs. So. So either, yeah, either that, uh, when you are the authority, I mean, need and authority is, could be similar but different. Yeah. So when you're the authority and you have employees, but when, when you need to take three days off uh, and your partner, you know your partner, your co-founder will be very upset how he needs to trust you that you are uh, professional enough if this is your strength or you are, uh, you know, he needs to trust your, your brand and wh what you bring about that you will, would, would do it. Uh, so it's when you have a need, when you are the authority and you want to make other people uh, do what you, are, you, you believe is right for them and for you, yeah. even when they work remote and you want to make sure you can, you can uh, trust them, and what people talk to about you behind your back, which is clients, investors, uh, promotion opportunities, and such. That's super important. You yeah. think that um, personal branding yeah. can also affect clients in a way? I mean, because they don't always see it, you know what I mean? Because once you're a client, I don't, we don't meet as much as often, you know, uh, at the first time we met, okay, so it was a networking event, it was uh, amazing, we started working and how can I put this personal brand also to my existing clients and show them to who am I? To your existing client. So first of all, um, you build a relationship with your client and it's, and, and again, your brand is there, you have a brand, they perceive you in a certain way. Um, there are different um, explanations and, and, and even models to that, but I like to use the, um, uh, the, the trusted advisor model, which means that if you bring, a, if you create a strong uh, connection with your client from day one as a trusted advisor, and again, and you can take your different values into this relationship, then then they know they can trust you, which is the most important, but that you are creative and can give them the best solutions or that you are always available and they feel comfortable with that. Again, that's about your strength. So how do you be consistent with your authentic um, relationship with them? So I think that's that's a very important thing about um, maintaining it with your clients. I agree, and that's, and that's how they will spread the word for you. I mean, your clients. Yeah. And I have to share a story. It's of actually course. one of the um, the biggest stories that really changed my perception and understanding about, about a brand. I was working before the COVID with an amazing Israeli startup. Uh, they sent me to, to sell their product and meet with investors in the US. Uh, I was meeting, I met with an investor. Uh, it was in the uh, um, New York Stock Exchange. You know, I went to meet him on the, like in the movies, in the 50th Super floor. business, yeah. 50th floor behind him I saw the Statue of Liberty like I'm like in an American movie Crazy. no he was uh, he was an ex-Israeli uh, and he met me he was very like firm and, and, and uh, serious um, so we sat on the table and he's like okay you can start I'm like okay I gave him a five minute speech of the company and then he had a poker face and he says he says in Hebrew can I speak in Hebrew with you and I'm like but you do speak in Hebrew. he said I mean to be very very straightforward Yes, I think this company is a fiction and it doesn't exist. Like very like annoying, you know. And what happened in my mind in the next minute was, was interesting. And the f my first reaction internally was, Oh shit. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? The company is selling in Europe, in the US, they want this, they want that. But then after my ego <laughs> went down, <laughs> I tell myself, you know, I'm sitting in front of a very smart person. He did millions, he invested in millions, maybe, there is a, a lesson I can learn that's like a minute in my mind. And I'm like, okay, sorry, can you please say, why do you think this way? And he said, and then he gave me the best gift he could ever give. He said, you know, our analysts check your company and the company information is different than what you just said. The founders on their LinkedIn, they, even, they still work in a corporate world and this data doesn't make sense with this data. And he gave me a gift because no investor and no client would tell you one by one what they think you did wrong. And most of the thing was about their image and how their information wasn't consistent or wasn't right or wasn't matching with what they wanted to show. And you remember him by that. I mean, just by that he simple gave me the story. Best gift. And, and yeah. you know what I learned? You can get in or out of the deal flow without even knowing. Why? Yeah. We can end the show right here. I mean, this was just a powerful <laughs> sentence, but let's continue. I think we spoke enough about uh, personal branding. Let's move on to networking because this is one of your many talents. And um, I want to hear like a very short five tips to start an interesting conversation. It doesn't have to be really five. I mean, you can give us more or less. It's fine. Okay. 
And I want to put the focus on events that I know no one and I'm all by myself, okay? Because when you go win with a friend, you have the wing, wing, wingman, you know? It's just, okay, let's talk with this guy, let's talk with... And it, and, and it starts like uh, to become a group yeah. without you even uh, trying to make it as a group uh, chat. Yeah. Let's say I'm all alone. Okay. What, what do, do I do? do? First thing, have a goal. If you can research the event before you go to the event, because why, why people hate events? Come on. People say, I go there, I come back home. Waste I of time. Someone, it's a waste of time. Yeah, I just go with thousands of uh, paperwork. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and what if you say, okay, there is an event. I want to meet one or two people. You try to research. Sometimes you can see the people who are attending the event. Sometimes not, but many times you can. And I say, I want to go to this event to meet Anise and to meet uh, Roy. And then I do everything I can to engage with you and get your information and Roy. And then I can go home because I, I achieved my goals. The rest is a bonus. So that would f make you feel like you have a mission and that you... Like research about the people that are going, the companies that will present maybe in yeah. that place and not don't go like clueless. Don't go like, okay, I got a card, let's go. Yeah, but sometimes you go clueless because it happened, because you didn't have time to research. Yeah. Or because someone invited you and I mean it happens the next thing I would try to do is um, I tr when I meet people I try to I, I break the ice with people so you know there are different locations like key locations that are easier to engage with people and I actually met people that I'm friends in with the space the of the networking event yeah ah, okay at the end in queues queues to the entrance queues to the restroom Oh. which is a strong one, cues to the food. What do you do? You actually bar. stand next to the restroom and just talk to people? Oh my God, this queue is so long. What's your... Okay. Wow. <laughs> no, you know, sometimes just conversation starts. Even yeah, yeah. For, for the mutual frustration that it takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good tip. Like, go into the yeah. place, check it all around, and, and see maybe like coffee, uh, coffee spots. That's yeah, always food a good thing. or exactly. And then sometimes you speak on what happens or the conversation just flows. Um, another thing I do when I go to events, I try to, to take a spot that I can see everything and just stand for a second and just look. Because it, it could be overwhelming. And when I go there and just try to look and understand what is happening, where people are, it gives me some sense and some comfort that Okay, this is what I want to I know do. where I am. I know who, who am I going to meet. Take a minute to just look. And then go to the strategic places. That's now. so true. I mean, when you go inside and yeah. it's all like, uh, people are talking and you go like, oh, yeah. uh, I need to talk and no one is approaching me. Why? And I can that, relate to that. And you know, that actually brings me to, to an amazing story and tip. Try to find those lone people that are are lost and, and they're unsure about what they're doing and you can go there and say hi nice to meet you or hi do you need any help or you know that would be really nice and, yeah i'm and just going to grab some coffee would, would you like, like to, to join coffee? yeah or just ask them <coughs> i usually ask questions like um directions um when is the next speaker going goes uh, up or so on and then start a conversation but oh. i had a really funny story a few years ago i was about to meet someone at um I think it was the London Stock Exchange event at yeah. a certain hotel and I arrived at the hotel and I'm talking to him on the phone. I was at the David Intercontinental and I, I was calling him and where are you? He said, I'm next to the suites, but I'm like, but I can't find you. And a really nice woman saw that I'm on the phone and she saw something like I'm lost. And she approached me and this is, hi, um, it seems like you're lost. Can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to meet my friend. That's he nice. said, I'll meet him here at the, at the London Stock Exchange event. She's like, darling, this is the Chicago Stock Exchange event. You're in the wrong hotel. Me and this crazy. woman became friend up until today of Firbinun. She is the first woman um, manager of, of hedge funds in Israel. And oh. she became a dear friend because she just offered Helped her you assistance. when you got lost. Yeah. So track the people that, that look like, not lonely, but alone in this event, uh, coffees, restroom, yeah. apparently don't go too weird with the restrooms yeah, yeah. Uh, just popping out of a room you know of a cabinet uh, but yeah waiting in lines lines are the key to find more people to talk to in a shorter amount of time because you don't want to waste your time the whole day just walking around uh, different uh, uh, yeah. people that, it, yeah. mm -hmm. how do you actually I want to ask something yeah how do you tackle uh, people that are just time wasters that it's, it's not going anywhere 
So I'll, I'll just go back to what you said. Um, it's really not about being like pushy, even if you're in a queue. It's really, you know, try to make it like um, just just an authentic, you know, make, make it flow. Don't don't just push it. Yeah. Uh, just make it happen like there's something genuine that can happen. But you say how to get time wasters. So sometimes what I do in such events, I meet different people and then I ask them, by the way, who, who are you looking to meet? And then I tell them, but I'm looking to meet with marketing directors, but I'll keep your people in mind. So I ask, how can I help them first? Oh. And if I can, I connect That's them. That's a good idea. But then most likely they will ask me, I'll tell them, by the way, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. And it happens in different events that people are time wasters, or you see that there is no connection that you're both there, for example, in the same. Yeah. He talks super slow and I can't handle it. How do you, how do you say, okay, Two thank things. you? First of all, always be respectful. Second of all, have your exit. Uh, sentence. I think I have an, an article about that on my oh, website, you have to an give old me a one. <laughs> uh, so just be respectful. First of all, it, it was really nice meeting you. Again, it may be, you know, just the right words to say, but try to make it authentic. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you for your time. It I could actually, be nice, you know. It's not. Yeah. It's not about not being nice. It's about okay. We can't. I mean, there's nothing. There's no common base around yeah. here. Yeah. And sometimes you can say, look, it's nice meeting you. I see that we're both on the same uh, slot, so. I'll, I just want to go because uh, th there are more people I'm looking for meeting. But thanks for your time. It was so nice to meet you. Ah, super straightforward. I'm, I'm you can or say it was nice to meet you and and then you have your excuse. I have a short time and I still need to meet some people. Or I was actually looking for this person and I, I want to go and see him. But mm. it happened to me like many times. Um, find your exit. I just have to go to the restroom. I was just about to go to the coffee. Just make them feel good. Give Leave them with a good feeling about you and about you and about themselves about, also i yeah. mean the conversation went well i met another person that's great but yeah it's not the perfect not fit it's fine <laughs> exactly and and you said before don't go too pushy and don't don't sound too like a salesman you know yeah. how do you do that how do you become like this calm uh person when you're surrounded with people and noise and chaos and and everyone wants you as a client and also to get to know you and how do you just keep focused on, on your targets and, and don't go around and just go uh, sending business cards, giving business cards to people for no reason? You know, people do that. That's yeah. stupid. Don't do that. So define who would you like to have your business card? Who would you? And, and by the way, it's better to take business cards than giving because when you take, you know that you will contact the person if you want. But when they take, most time they will Better to take you. than give. Mm. Okay. You can give, but, but, if, but don't count that on them to get in touch with you and obviously you have LinkedIn today so it's easy um, but just uh, collect cards and, 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 and respond and yeah. send hey it was nice meeting you and so on but try also to understand what are the type of people that you want to to keep to, to meet with at the event and that would make sure that if I meet X is not right for me but Y is right for me so that will help you to know who to, to navigate faster to navigate and, faster. and not to waste 10 minutes on a person and then go like ah oh. yeah it's not my field of work. It doesn't have to be even that he's not a nice person. It's just, you know, I'm in the medical field. Okay, I have nothing to contribute yeah. in that field, so. Sometimes, you know, you just, you just feel it. So you just have a good, like, enjoy things and, and, and continue. And sometimes people ask you for the card or, or, so of course, give it to them. But try to be focused, but also try to, try to enjoy. I mean, it's not only about let's meet as many people because it's quality, not quantity. Just. If you want to know how to become, just try to really enjoy, understand that you have your goal, your one, two people that you want to meet. And apart from that, you're just there to to meet, to yeah. see what luck would bring your way. And, and some events are very uh, nice and <coughs> the people that talk are just, learn a lot. yeah, exactly. Yeah. The speakers are also interesting. So, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, your goal can be learning more from speakers, which is. So I see three main reasons to go to conferences. One is to learn. Uh, the second one is to strengthen relationships. Sometimes you see people that you already know, yeah. and this is a good time to strengthen the relationship and make sure to be on the radar so they remember you and what you do and your brand and so That's on. That's what got us here, basically. Yeah. And know new people. So learn, strengthen current relationships, and getting to know new people. That's perfect. Would you believe that we're almost done? No. That's crazy, an so hour. I, I want to give you one more tip. Of course, of important. course, of course. And I have one more question. <laughs> so my tip would be that, again, it's not easy for people, as you said, to break the ice and start communicating with other people. So the best thing is to talk about common ground because common ground connect us. We, we feel that we know one another because we have shared uh, uh, topics. And in order to know what to talk about, I developed the four P's of common ground, four topics that always 
uh, go well together. The four P's is about talking about passions, people, places, and present. What happens now? Passions, because when you talk about your passion, you light up. When you talk about things you love, people you love, your vacations, uh, hobbies, and conversation changes in yeah. a second. You see it in, in your eyes, yeah. basically. If you talk to me about Australia, you see how I'm like, you know, getting mm-hmm. excited about yes, traveling. Please. Talk to people about their passions. Also, the next thing is people. When we have mutual friends, oh, you also know Gaddy? Me too. Places, places you were traveling to, lived in, studied at, places also makes us feel like we know someone. And what happens now? The weather, the TV shows, not politics and not bad things. Not COVID, not, not like, COVID, yeah. The coffee, the speaker. So these are that's a great interesting uh, event yeah what are you looking to get from here blah blah and so on so it usually helps you go into more um, nicer and more comfortable conversation at least at the beginning in the small talk would you say there's a time that you just need to say okay let's go I mean because as you can get sucked into events and waste yeah. uh, the whole day of course when when is that when is the time to say okay you I did my 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 share here and if you have a goal then once you achieved your goals that's I, it. I was at the conference in Tel Aviv like there was a, a speaker from New York I talked to him a few days ago uh, before he came to Israel sorry I told him let's meet at the conference I came just in the right time when he spoke when he went off stage we had like 10 minutes talk exchange information and I left you, it, it can be like a 30 minutes visit and it can be more so once you achieved your goals or you felt it enough you Um, just again your time and everybody's your time is valuable so if you if you know why you come to the event or you give it a just frame it yeah last question Liron I can't believe an hour <laughs> went by that's crazy do you have like a daily routine or something you do that gives you this this motivation that you always put out I mean Every time I meet you, you're just like an energizer My Barney. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, uh, very energetic, very willing to help, very uh, uh, community oriented. And, 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 and I love that. And I'm just thinking, what's your secret? I mean, what are you taking? Give me some. And if, it, if, if you're not taking anything to help you out with that. So uh, what do you do to give you that inner passion for your profession, for what you do? Do you have like a daily routine or something that uh, first of all sleep well I love to sleep so that would be one thing perfect uh, that's the best answer that, yet to be honest <laughs> everyone is like uh, I work out at 4 a.m come on <laughs> why <laughs> um, I think it's you know I grew up in In a house where my father is, is a pilot and I grew up um, as a little girl um, in a house where all the family were supporting my dad to become an LL pilot so he was uh, one of the first pilots in LL that weren't pilots in the in the airport in the Air Force oh that's nice so I grew up in a family where like no history basically of flying in started, the army he started flying when he was 16 but he because he wasn't in the Air Force he couldn't become an allowed pilot he was fighting for it so my childhood was about wow let's have help dad fulfill his dream and when I grew up and it, you see it with my brother and sister as well I really believe that if you work if you fulfill your dream if you work in those things that you love in your passions you You know, maybe dream is we have a lot of dreams but work where your passion is my passion is to help people my passion is to speak to people my passion is to um, to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm you know giving it to the world giving yeah to the world something for me my passion is to just just help you know I was just here on the way here with the taxi driver he was sharing some problem and I gave him you know I just like to help people I guess yeah yeah and I mean I A person or two that will listen to this uh, podcast uh, and will uh, go to the next event a bit more confident I mean you you did your thing basically I mean yeah. that's that's the whole that's how you do business that's how you keep moving forward use people to your advantage and and, and don't be such so I mean afraid of it because you know people are very yeah, sorry. no no it's fine you say don't be afraid and I even say that um, people you know first of all we talked about our brands so if you know what your passions are what your strengths are use all everything that God gave you yeah. that you love and you're good at but people and relationships make a switch make a switch in friend reach in opportunities reach in resources reach in knowledge reach in money so as we know more people we just make our life better and ha- and, and happier yeah. and that's what I wish for you and for you 
everybody who listens to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I had a great time. I'm not sure that you did, but I, I know. I'm sure you did. You're amazing. Thank you, Anis, for It was a super interesting hour, <laughs> and I think we can do even more content about that. I mean, yeah. networking is something that you can't get enough of, and I think networking should be everyone's priority, yeah. and like 80% of your business should be networking. Yeah. That's my personal belief, and, 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 I, and I go by that, and it works most of the time. So, I mean, yeah. you don't always want to go, but eventually it brings you business, and, and that's how we met. Yeah. So that's perfect. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I mean, that was uh, super interesting. I'm pretty sure we can do, uh, we will do a follow-up uh, uh, Just tell me what. on that. So Liron is tagged right here uh, in our post, and you can totally reach out uh, and ask anything mm -hmm. you you want, yeah? I mean, feel Definitely. free if, you're, if you want to uh, talk more about that. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you uh, for all our viewers. I'm not going to switch to Hebrew now because we're, we're used to it already. But uh, have a great evening. I'm going to be out for a month and uh, we'll be back very soon. So, uh, Liron Glickman, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much Happy again. Happy New Year. Let's make it an amazing 2023. Let's make it super amazing. And come amazing. on, just network and do your thing. And Liron, thank you so much for this uh, interview. So, we'll be here uh, in a month. Don't miss out too much. Uh, and we'll talk soon. So, thank you very much for being here. And uh, have a good night. Radio <laughs> Hemotia הכוח חוסר לאנשים